Hello, I'm Johnny Delgado, and today we're going to talk about string manipulation. No, not these kinds of strings. Strings when we talk about programming. Ways to store groups of characters, like numbers or letters or symbols. So, in previous videos, we've talked about how you can create strings with something like saying string s, where s is your variable name, and how you can set that string by saying something like s equals apple. And make sure you put Apple in quotations to let the system know this is a string we're talking about. And so to check that we did everything right, let's try to print it out using system.out.println. And we see here, string s is Apple. I added the extra quotations in the output log here myself just to show us which characters are part of the string that we're looking at. But you probably also remember that we can create a string and set it in the same line such as this one, string t equals pi. Oh, let's uncomment that. And we run it. And sure enough, it gives us string t equals pi. So those are just two different ways to create a string. This is all stuff you already know. Now let's get on to our first manipulation. How do we combine strings? Uh, hopefully you see what I'm trying to combine based on the last example. Let's take the string that is that holds the value apple and the string that holds the value of pi and put those together. To do that in a print statement, if we just want to output this value and have it say apple pi together, we literally just write s plus t as you can see here. And let me run that and prove to you that that's true. Yes, string s plus string t is the string apple pi. Uh, notice how this didn't add a space or anything, it just combined these strings into one. Similarly, we can store this in a variable if we want, like you see here in line 33. I'm calling this string r, and that equals s plus t. And this is going to give us a string that is exactly the same as the way we wrote it above in line 30. See right here, string r is apple pie. So to combine strings, you can just add them together with the plus operator. So that's fine and dandy, but, but let's do something a little bit more advanced with strings. Let's say we want to get a particular character from the string, a character being one letter or symbol or number. Uh, we want to take a single unit, a single character out of that string. We use the care at operator, or you might hear it's called a uh, char at. And in this example, I'm just saying I, which here is peach cobbler. Can you tell I was hungry? Uh, I dot char at zero. Zero is our index. And if you remember from previous videos, in programming, we always start counting at zero. So go ahead and pause the video and try to predict which character is going to print out when we run this code. I dot char at zero. Um, when our string is, when our string i is peach cobbler. Okay, now let's see. If you guessed p, you're absolutely correct. That zero index references the p in peach cobbler. And we can change this to something else. Let's say I want to uh, get the a right here. I would check zero is p, one is e, and three, the index three, or index two, is the third letter, which is A. So we put in two, and I'm expecting to get out the letter A. Let's see if that's right. Perfect. Now, you might be thinking, does this only work for letters? Well, let's check the space here. So we go from this is two, the C is three, the H is four, the space should be five. But will it give us the space as our as our character output or will it just jump straight over to the C for cobbler? Let's run it and find out. Sure enough, it gives us the space as our output. So a space, a blank space, is also considered a character and you can pull that out of a string or not pull it out of, but you can get it referenced by using the uh, the care at the character at function written this way i dot care at and then in your parentheses your parameter is whatever the index of that character you're trying to get is next let's look at substrings these are one of the most 
common uses that I find myself using when it comes to string manipulation. A substring is a smaller bit of the string. If your full string is this big and we only want to take half of it, we use substring. Or not even just half. If we want a smaller chunk of it, but it's not just a single character, we'd likely use substring. So in this instance, we have a we have still we're using peach cobbler and how do I how do I just get the word cobbler out of it? Well, if we know the space is at index 5, the word cobbler starts at index 6. So I'm just going to run i.substring6 and hopefully that'll give us everything from the c in cobbler on to the end. And let's try to run that. Oh, should uncomment it. And sure enough, string n is cobbler. So, uh, so the parameter here, when we just put in one parameter, it gives us uh, it, it gives us from that index all the way to the end. But you might be thinking, how could we get peach? You know, we have peach cobbler. You might want to take uh, peach out instead of cobbler. That's a little. It's not more difficult. You just write it in a, in a different way. So we're actually starting with index zero now, and we're going all the way to index four, if I'm remembering how to end it correctly. Oh, no, never mind. We're going to index five because the substring method does not include the second number when you put in two. So if we just write six, it gives us every character starting at the sixth index on to the end. If we put in two parameters, it gives us the first parameter that's given, in this case index zero, so it gives us the character at position zero, which is P, and it goes all the way until it gets to the fifth index and it, want to, it wants to get there, but it doesn't. So it is zero inclusive to five not inclusive. Uh, you you uh, uh, math teachers in the audience might be more familiar with seeing it like this, but in programming that's not how we write it. But you can think of it that way, with the square bracket first and then a smooth bracket. Uh, so let me make sure I didn't break anything. Great. Um, you can do this in the middle of the word as well. Let's say we want just some kind of gibberish string from, you know, three to six. We would do three comma seven and we get, sure enough, ch space c for the end of the word peach and the first letter in cobbler. And it gives us the space as well. Remember, the substring just cuts the string in some way and spits out part of it. It doesn't get rid of spaces, for example. That's a different string manipulation which we're not going to cover, but you can look into how to remove all characters of one type on your own if you like. Next, let's go to our final uh, our final manipulation for strings that you might deal with. This is the split string operation. Um, in this case, we're still going to use peach cobbler, but now we're making a new variable and instead of before I've just been creating strings and characters, here we're actually going to create a string array and that's where these square, square brackets are. So we're declaring a string array by saying string and then putting in our two square brackets and I'm calling it G just to get all the letters of string as my variable names. Just happened to work out well that way. Uh, and then we're going to use the split method. So we say I, which is our peach cobbler string, I dot split and then for the parameter I want to split it at the space. I want one string that says peach and one string that says cobbler. So here I just have a method that prints out the string array in an easy to see kind of way. All this does is just prints the values in the array. Uh, it says first say string array g is put a square bracket then print out all the values within uh, within the array and then separate uh, or put a comma and a space between all the values except the last one. That's why we have this if statement. That's because I don't want a comma and a space at the end of the last variable and I finish it off with a square bracket. So if this all looks confusing, don't worry. It doesn't need to be 100% clear. Just know that all of that prints out the values in the array. So let's test it out. Let's see what the split string method is. This is the method we're looking at. 
So we run it, and we say, sure enough, string array G is peach and cobbler. So this array now holds two values, the first being the word peach, and the second word being cobbler, the second string rather. But I can add more to this, and it'll keep working to the nth degree. I can say, uh, tasty peach cobbler, and run it here. And sure enough, now our string array has three different words. So the split method is fantastic if you want to, you know, uh, divide up every word in a sentence. Or if you have, um, uh, let's say you have some, some uh, grade data input. Let's say you have all of the grades written like 100, 98, 75, 86, and then, you know, they picked it up for the, for the final exam again. Uh, let's say this is how your whatever system you're using is storing grades, and you want to split each of these uh, into individual values. Well, you can do that with the split method very easily uh, and just change your split uh, character into something else. In this case, I'm using a hyphen. And see, there you go. Now you've gone from having a, a single string that you can't manipulate or you might have to write down individually into having something that stores each of these numbers as individual strings. And then you could convert these strings into integers and manipulate them mathematically and take the average and do all kinds of fun, mathy programming stuff that could make your life easier for taking averages of the class or of a particular student's grades. So that's string manipulation, not a too long video, but hopefully that'll give you a, a sense of what you can do with strings. Just to recap, uh, combining strings, use the plus operation like string S plus string T, uh, and that will combine them. Uh, if you want to get a character at a certain location in the string, you just can use care at and then put the location in the parentheses. If you want to take part of a string, a smaller section of a string, based on the location, you could use the split string method, as shown here. Or if you are trying to split up one large string based on a certain particular repeated character, I would recommend the split method. So that's everything for today. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun. I've been Johnny Delgado. Have a good one.